The United States is in a crisis. It has been in a crisis since the 1990s. It began with all teams win in school sports and have sex with whomever you want. It won't affect your family or your life in sex education and Sunday morning morals. Students were told that college was the way to survive because it led to a safe, secure job. It started when institutional education took a turn on a few key principles. Now, people don't know how to win in sports. They are unhappy in their families and their lives. And they don't know how to keep or even find a safe, secure job. People like Ann Coulter and myself, who foresaw Trump's election and went on record, understood the nature of the crisis, which was why we forecasted the election with the confidence we did. We, Trump predictors, including Alan Lightman, maintained our confidence in the face of so many voices telling us otherwise because our principles for understanding the political atmosphere shouted that much louder. Americans believe in one of two types of crises. Both relate to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. About half of the country believes we have an upper needs crisis, that if we don't refine our diplomacy, lay down our defenses to show good faith, and give more money from our vast public funding, that we will lose our homes. They believe that our enemies will change their hostilities toward us if we leave them alone and give them whatever they want from us. The other group, about half of the country, believes that we have a lower needs crisis on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. They believe that we have threats and problems which themselves exist on the lower level of Maslow's hierarchy, food, shelter, basic physical safety and danger, etc., They believe that if we don't keep strong doors, keep our defenses no matter how rude, and find ways to make high-profit business, preferably small to mid-size businesses, to pay taxes into our depleting public funds, that we will lose our homes. They believe that our enemies are like Hitler of World War II, that giving them what they want will make them want more, and they will never leave us alone until either they or we are dead. The second group's answer is becoming stronger, so that we might live longer, as our enemies exhaust their resources trying to harm us until they either change their fundamental opinions to agree with us, or give up, realizing that we can't be overcome. These are the two groups in America, and they're two types of crises they each believe we are in. The group that believes in the higher level of needs being the most pressing are taking to speech, protest, and expression. The group that believes in the lower level of needs is, for the most part, keeping their peace and working through quiet action. This lower level needs group surprised pollsters at the recent election. Even if we ignore the Trump supporters who stayed home in California and New York, the vote for Trump was still more than the so-called expert pundits predicted. But there is a deeper crisis. Both groups will only persist as long as their sense of crisis empowers them. When people fear loss of Maslow's upper levels of needs, friendship, self-actualization, comforts of living, they are motivated to complain. And they complain until they are tired. This means having conversations, demonstrations, and possibly violence for some of them. But, when someone feels that his basic needs are in jeopardy, his very survival, such as the feeling of being chased by a bear, only then does that fight-or-flight extra boost of energy kick in. This gives stronger and more lasting energy to people who genuinely feel that their basic level of survival needs are threatened. In basketball terms, they have the power to play the full-court press. Malcolm Gladwell explains in David and Goliath that to do a full-court press is exhausting and that a team can only pull off a full-court press if the team is desperate. The deeper crisis we face is tied to the nature of the basic responders. They have had basic-level crises before. Their own jobs have been in jeopardy, and they had to find a way to survive. They had to run away from home. 
been fired from their lifelong job, lived on a farm that paid their bills, owned a family business instead of a job, and their own survival had been in jeopardy before. They did not have a safe, secure job guaranteeing their basic level of needs. They had been desperate before, pulled off a full court press before, and it actually worked and barely saved their own skin. Then they saw how much stronger they were, and they went on to build stronger, more lasting work, whether as entrepreneurs, artists, farmers, small business owners, or to find a new professional job. They finally did what was statistically impossible. During the 2016 election, when the issues of the nation's needs were on the table, the higher level and lower level needs, about half of the nation feared for basic needs. They said to themselves, I have been here before myself. Now our nation is in the same place I was in. Then their fight or flight powers kicked in. They played the full court press and did what was statistically impossible. Ann Coulter and I believed that there were enough people in the basic needs group to make November happen. We recognize the basic needs people because we are part of them. We have survived our own basic needs crises and have our past that convince us we are right. Just as we opposed Romney and McCain for not tapping into those basic needs, we knew Trump would. Having come out of major debt, Trump also had his own basic needs crisis. Anne and I had seen this movie before. We had been in similar movies of our own before. We already knew how the movie ends. For us, forecasting the election wasn't a theory. It was already in our pasts. So, Anne Coulter and I proved that we understood how America's election would turn out because Ann Coulter and I understood America from our own lives. The deeper crisis is that America still hasn't decided what to think. The country hasn't made up its mind on whether trained instincts lie, or whether they might be lying to us this time. The country remains undecided about what our basic needs instincts tell us. We are undecided about the basics. Undecided. That is the deeper crisis in America. And that is the letter. I'm Jesse Steele. JesseSteele.com. <laughs>